Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the session. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, sorry for that delay. I think the internet uh, is a little bit low, so it took time for the recording to start. All right. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, uh, for giving us this opportunity to come together and to study your word and read and uh, and learn together, God. I pray that we will open our hearts, we will open our minds to receive from you this morning, oh God. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Lord, uh, we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So uh, last week, uh, or the previous class, we talked about the evangelist in the early church. We looked at all the examples, of course, not all the examples, but most of the examples. We looked at how the Lord Jesus set an example. He chose 12 people, 12 apostles, sent them out. Then he chose 72 others, sent them out to do the work of uh, evangelizing. Then uh, when the early church started, we see that uh, God raised up many evangelists. And even though the, the function or the name evangelist was not used until um, you know the time of Philip, uh, we do know that the functions of the evangelist was already working in the church. So we see Philip, the apostle Paul was a wonderful evangelist. And all through the uh, New Testament, we see that God used many people to, uh, you know, to reach out, to minister. And we also looked at aspects of how an evangelist can be a person who can pioneer a ministry as well right so sometimes we think okay an evangelist is somebody who will only go out reaching out ministering to people but he can also pioneer ministries uh, and he can also be a person who can plant churches that's what the apostle paul did uh, and we see we saw that in the early church so let's go into chapter four now chapter four um before we get into this chapter i just want to give us a little bit of understanding what happened after you know, the early church was formed, uh, the Roman Catholic Church came in. I know you're studying Christian history and missions. You'll li learn a little more about that. Uh, but uh, just to give us a backdrop on what is the restoration of the ministry? What happened to the ministry in the church and why did it need to be restored? Right. So uh, after the early church, the in the book of Acts, people came in and then the Roman Catholic uh, came into being. The Romans overpowered uh, Christians as a whole, right? So if you look at church history, um, uh, many leaders, many emperors came in. Some of them persecuted Christians really badly. Some of them were favorable to Christians. And so over time, the whole Roman Catholic system came into being, right? And when the Roman Catholic system came into being, it was one person in charge. That was the Pope, right? And uh, the Bible was only one Bible, and it was placed in the in the church. And if only the Pope or the priest could read it, and not everyone else, so it was not like what happened in the early church, right? Jesus didn't say, you know, you have to finish your degree and then go. He just sent everyone go. You believe? Go. But now things have completely changed, right? You got one person. He will read the scriptures. He will preach whatever they say. You listen, you go back home. So it came to a point where evangelism or church growth almost became zero. Right. So it was called the Dark Ages. Right. So about hundreds of years, what happened was, so for example, we were there during that time. Um, we get married. We'll have children. Go to Sunday church, finish church, come back home. That's all the responsibility was. There was there was no pastor, prophet, apostle. All of it had died down because the Roman Catholic Church came into being. But over time, uh, uh, we know that uh, there was a reformation. The reformation movement means to reform the church. God sent people. Right? And God sent wonderful leaders who could stand against the Roman Catholic system. Many of them lost their lives. Many of them paid the price. But we do know that uh, the ministry of the fivefold ministry was restored after some time. Right? Uh, especially when King James came in. Uh, you know, if you read history, it's very interesting. You know, uh, King James, 
he says um, he he says okay what, what why is it that the christians are you know causing all these uh, riots and problems what what do they want and then the christians said we want our own bibles then to please the people king james said okay everyone can get a bible we'll print thousands of bible everyone print a bible but one condition you have to name the bible after me so so he said okay everyone said okay we'll name the bible after you they printed all the bibles and it was named the king james version right and that was the first time when believers after like i think it was 400 years of dark ages when believers had their own copy of the bible the king james version and then started the reformation people started to read the scriptures understand the scriptures saying okay this is what the bible is saying so i'll follow this right so the priest and the the pope they all began began to lose their power but it's not like the catholic system stopped it continued the system continued but there was a reformation in the ministry of the church now uh, uh, let's look at our notes if you, we don't have it with us right uh, but maybe you can pull it up on the soft copy yeah so you see this the earliest church historian states that occupying the first steps those occupying the first steps in succession from the apostles sets out on a journey from home performed the work of evangelists and preached to such as had not yet heard the word of faith so eusebius uh, was one of the church historians who went about preaching what people did not hear the word of faith now we must understand the 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 preaching that happened in the catholic system right uh, during that time it wasn't probably they would have preached but it wasn't the word of faith it wasn't like full deep into god's word it was just portions it was very structured now they were not going against god right nothing against the catholic system but they were they they had certain restrictions they had certain things that they didn't believe and they didn't want uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. They were not too keen on those things. They were not for the fivefold ministry. But when UCBS came, he began to preach the word of faith. Uh, then we see that uh, Pantanius of Alexandria, who further journeyed to India, was one of the evangelists of the world after the manner of the apostles. Now, again, he was, God used him to restore or to reform the ministry. The ministry of evangelists in succession. So we got a list of uh, evangelists here. We may not even have heard of these evangelists, right? Uh, Bogo Mills, Hussites, the Lollards, the Puritans, the, the Methodists, the Presbyterians, the Baptists, all of these, uh, uh, these denominations began to raise up evangelists. Now picture this. You got the Catholic system. Then you got all of these, the Bogomites, the Hussites, the Lollards, the Puritans, the Methodists, uh, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, all these groups are beginning to read their own version of the Bible. They have their own Bible, they're reading, and God is ministering to them. And some of them are saying, hey, I'm going to go out and preach the gospel. I'm going to go do what the Bible is saying. Right? Probably they read all about the Lord Jesus, and they may have come to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, God is Jesus is saying, go and make disciples. Nothing more, nothing less. Right? They would have read all of that. The ministry was reformed. Right? And in this way, uh, uh, many of them lost their lives for the sake of the gospel. Now, during the time of uh, the intense persecution, I've mentioned this before, where the, the Christians were burnt. Christians were crucified. Christians were placed on, uh, you know, there were times they were sawn in two. And they were cut into two. Uh, and many of them lost their lives. But they paid the price. They were willing to go reach out and share the gospel. Um, many commentators give validity of historical credibility of many of the evangelists. Uh, evangelists were founded churches and stimulated existing ones so during the reformation 
new churches were planted and existing churches were built up right uh, we also see that evangelists were used uh, as itinerant preachers they went forth from various churches in order to preach the gospel and to perfect the work which had been begun by the apostles so from if you look at church history and you learn more in church history about uh, you know uh, Christian history and missions, uh, but if you look at the fourth and the fifth century, uh, the the rise of the Reformation, the Church began at that time, where miracles, signs, and wonders was a common thing during that time. Right? It, it was very common. But if you go on after some time, we see that uh, the New England revival happened. The Welsh revival happened, and after all these revivals, the fivefold ministry just continued to become stronger and stronger. Look at this example of uh, John Wycliffe. Uh, how many of you have heard of John Wycliffe? Have you read about John Wycliffe? Right. You must, must read about him, John Wycliffe. Right. So he was used as a wonderful, uh, wonderful man of God, very brave person. John Wycliffe said. Um, uh, you know, I defy the Pope and his uh, and his uh, you know rules and his his teachings, and he was burnt to the stake. But what he did was he did a great evangelistic work, uh, work all across New England. Right? In England, he did a great work. Uh, new churches were birthed. John Wycliffe was used as a powerful word of faith teacher. He there were times when he would. Uh, pray for healing. People would just be healed, and people would experience the power of God. Uh, John Wycliffe was used in that way. George Whitfield. Uh, have you heard of George Whitfield? Right. I I'm sure these names are uh, common names. Sorry. In okay, we learned it in God's generals, but George Whitfield was during the time of uh, of John Wesley. Yeah. They were uh, contemporaries. George Whitfield was a, a very powerful orator, right? a powerful speaker. He said that uh, when he spoke, uh, it would echo in those churches. Right? It would it would echo, and he would he would preach a sermon by reading it, right? But just by reading the sermon, people would be touched. People, the anointing of God would come upon people and they would fall on the ground, weep and pray and cry. He would just read out the sermon. He had a very monotonous note. Right? So he would, like if you, if you read about him, it says that uh, he, would, he would have his sermon in front of him. He, they would, he would have his candle there and it looked scary because he was a, a very uh, you know, weird looking person, big built, and he would read the whole sermon. Basically, read no intonation, no uh, emotions, nothing. He would just read. This is what the Lord Jesus did, and this is what He did. Just reading monotonous. People in the crowd would feel that as if God Himself was speaking, and people were so convicted of their sins. Right? God used Him so powerfully. Um, George Whitfield, uh, since the Lollards, four hundred years before, it is said that. On a clear day and, and on the wind blowing right, he could understand it a mile away. He would preach between five to 50,000 people and thousands were saved under his ministry. And these thousands probably went about doing the work of the ministry again. And John and Charles Wesley, we all know the brothers, John and Charles Wesley back in England. Um, and it's it's really interesting to study about them john and charles wesley their their mother would always pray and say use my children for the ministry and she would spend nights they were they had come from a very poor family but john and charles were very inclined towards god at a very young age so charles would play an instrument he was good at singing he was good at music and john was good at preaching Right, so it was a nice brother combination. They both, uh, in their college, they what what happened would Charles would sing a song, John Wesley will go up and preach. And during the in his early twenties, when John Wesley used to preach, there were times when people would 
uh, come with spears and swords and you know try to kill him but he wouldn't flinch he would just stand there right? and he would keep preaching there if you read his uh, in church history you know charles would run away so say, come let's go he would stand there and preach so uh, that in kind of integrity that kind of authority uh, john and charles wesley had um, and we know that John Wesley preached more than 20,000 sermons. He did a great, great work of ministry. And when you go down um, after that, there were many people, D.L. Moody, Charles Finney. And we see all, all these people God used to revive the evangelist. Right? Uh, then we have the healing evangelist. We look at the healing evangelist is an evangelist who represents the gospel with a demonstration of spiritual power, healing with proclamation and proclaiming the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. So basically, we need to be thankful for all of them because they went about preaching, teaching and doing the work of an evangelist that today there are so many evangelists around us. Look at our nation so many evangelists but the question to be asked is are they doing the work of the evangelist right because there's so much that's happening in the body of christ and it is sad that when we question it uh, you know we may not be we'll be questioned back who are you to question that right but our responsibility is if god is calling us to the ministry to be faithful where we are right? and we look at even now when we look at the United States we look at the West we look at Asia and the ministry God is raising up evangelists healing evangelists regular evangelists evangelists who just go out share the gospel and and he's going to continue doing that in the early 1950s A. A. Allen was a wonderful evangelist right Oral Roberts again God used him so powerfully. Billy Graham, God used him so powerfully. right? And these are people who functioned in the gift of the, uh, uh, you know, the evangelist. How many of you have read the uh, documentary of Billy Graham? You read it? Wow. You know, when you read about uh, the documentary of Billy Graham, God told him, you go and you preach. He came out, he came from mediocre family. God told him, You go and preach. He said, God, who will listen to me? I, my, my, I mean, I'm not a very good orator or uh, I'm not very well versed in the scripture. He said, You go and preach the gospel, which is this the cross. So he, at his early 20s, he hired a hall and he had his first meeting. Ten people came. Ten people came for his meeting. In those 10 people, three people said, I'll join you. <laughs> three people said, I'll join you. I will make sure that people will come. You preach. All you have to do is preach. You ready to do that? We will support you. We will get people. We will have meetings everywhere. Now, Billy Graham himself is surprised. This is the first time I'm meeting you all. They are saying, uh, you know, we are willing to support you. We are willing to, you know, hire the halls. You know, having a meeting, we need a lot of things, right? So these three people joined the team and Billy Graham started. So he started going to these corn fields right? open fields. All of a sudden there were 100, 200. And then he writes in his Bible, there was a time when there were 10,000 people coming. And when he would see that crowd, he would think these 10,000 people are coming to hear me speak. Right? It, it would humble him so much that he would go back he would spend time in god's presence and you know is that the attitude that we must have yes because if you look at it now oh 10000 people are coming to listen to me so so you know we very easily may get puffed up we may you know think oh wow they're coming to listen to me but for billy graham it was not so it sometimes in in the early 1990s 50000 people used to come to listen to him speak what did he preach? Only gospel. Was there healings in his crusade? May have been, but we don't know. Like he never called people. There were no great miracles. There was no great healings. Nothing. 
simple message of the cross. In the end, the same song, just as I am, without one plea, one altar call, everyone will come, pray, give their lives to Christ and go. That's all he would preach, the gospel. We see that God blessed him and his ministry. Oral Roberts, again, wonderful. Uh, when he started his ministry, he, he was a healing evangelist. Right? God began to use him powerfully. Uh, and so we see that from that dark ages, there was a reformation of the ministry of the evangelist. Right. So let's go to chapter 5. Look at the practical keys of doing the ministry of the evangelist. Number one point, if you and I, God is calling us to be an evangelist, to evangelize, whether it's of gift or the function, number one rule, follow the biblical pattern. Not only for this, but I can, uh, I would say, I leave it open to everything. In every aspect of our lives, follow the biblical pattern. Follow what God says. Follow what the scriptures say. When you pray, what does the Bible say about prayer? No, Jesus says, when you pray, don't stand on the corners, but go to your room, close the door, pray. What does the Bible say about worship? Worship in spirit and truth. What does the Bible say about spiritual discipline? Pray, meditate on the word of God, spend time in God's presence. So in every aspect of our life, whether evangelist, pastor, apostle, whatever it is, follow the biblical pattern. What did what does the Bible teach us? Right? So if we are preaching the word of God, or we are called to be an evangelist, or we're called to be a pastor, what does the Bible say about a pastor? And the apostle Paul writes it to Timothy. What does he say? As a, as a leader, as a deacon, be faithful to one wife, do this, don't drink, don't involve in uh, immorality. There's a whole list of things. We must obey it. The biblical pattern is the best example that we can follow. Now, what is the biblical pattern in terms of the evangelist? Jesus said, go, preach, teach. Jesus chose 72. He said, go in twos. So maybe we can follow that go in teams right it's 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 good to do that right you're going in a team you support each other yeah, it's there's no competition there's no strife you should be of one mind one heart right one vision one purpose that is to bring souls to the kingdom of god so number one follow the biblical pattern right sometimes we get stirred up doing things that is may not be in the bible no, recently, uh, somebody sent me a series of message sermons. So I was listening to these sermons. This is all from the West, right? I was listening to these sermons, and these are big churches. You got twenty thousand odd people sitting, and this pastor is preaching. Okay, he's you know he's worn all those chains and four or five crosses, and you know you don't know how the uh, said. Okay, don't go by the looks, but he began to preach. He began to preach. He started talking about car parking, about McDonald's, about you know where he went for breakfast, where his wife took him for lunch. 30 minutes, he's talking everything other than the gospel. Then he's got some, you know, some snacks and you know, biscuits and all these things on the stage. Now 20,000 people are listening to this, right? And they're clapping for. Oh, you know, you should. He's doing some sponsor work for you know, some burgers, French fries, everything he's got on the stage. He's saying, We must eat, we must enjoy. And I'm waiting for the message to start. And he related all that food that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. That was the message. The God of Providence. So I said, Are you serious? Are you serious? This is the message. There are people in that audience who have probably lost their jobs, lost their family members, who are in depression, who are suicidal, people who are you know, going through pain in their body, emotionally, 
physically, they're going through so much of trouble. Nobody wants to know all this. I, I was I was thinking, I, I was not upset, but I was sad. So I got 20,000 people are coming to listen to this. Then there's another message, somebody, some, there's another church where the pastor comes and he says, close your Bibles. I'm not going to preach from that. Right? And he starts saying, what is the difference between Christian and another religion? And all about, all natural, when you talk about you know, good speakers, these are good orators. They can speak well. You give them two hours also, they'll speak. Then they'll make a topic, they will speak. You give them on the spot topic, they will speak. Because they're good orators. What does Apostle Paul say? I'm not depending on my own skill. Lest the power of the cross, lest the cross lose its power. I'm not depending on my eloquence or my talent or my skill. Was he talented? Yes. Was Apostle Paul, uh, you know, he knew all everything from the scriptures? Definitely yes. But he's saying, I didn't depend on all of this. All I preached was the cross crucified. Simple. Oh, and he says, and Apostle Paul says, there's only one time, if you look at the scriptures in his uh, in his epistles, only once he talks about his about his testimony. Only once. And that too very briefly, maybe six verses. I was here, I saw the the thing, Jesus came, spoke to me. He told, you'll be a light to the Gentiles. I went to Arabia three years. After three years, I went back to Tarsus and I was working there. That's it. No more. So what is the biblical pattern when we are ministering to people? Preach the word. Minister with signs, wonders, and miracles. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Always do that. Always. Let the word of God be the center. And if I, you know, it's interesting because some of our church folks and people from different places, they send me these, you know, these sermons and snippets. That's very sad when you look at it, right? They're very good speakers. They can speak very well. They can make, they can, you know, who was a very good orator? Sorry? <laughs> who can make the audience cry? Yeah. And who can captivate the audience? Why was Hitler so famous? Right? He was a good orator. He, if he had told people go and burn down uh, one country, they'll go and do it. Whether it's right or wrong, that is secondary. His oratory skills, he would captivate them. He would spend that entire one hour when he's speaking, no? He would speak in such authority. He was a very good speaker. That's why he was able to, you know, people believed him, people followed him. Was it wrong what he was doing? 100% wrong, killing the Jews. They know that killing is wrong. But why were they behind him? There's another man called Idi Amin. He was a Russian uh, dictator. He was so cruel, he would, you know, sorry to say all of this, but this is to help us understand. He, he would kill the enemies and he would eat human flesh. I mean, but he had 40, 50,000 people following him. Was he doing a right thing, wrong thing, right thing? But he had wonderful, powerful um, oratory, oratory skills. Now, the devil can use our skills also if we are not careful with it. Right? So we need to be sure that what we do, we follow the biblical pattern. What is the biblical pattern? God's word. So whether we are when, when we are, you know, whether we start our own churches or if you get invited to a church to preach, preach the word. Right? Don't don't waste time doing anything else. Follow the biblical pattern, right? And let the word of God minister to people. Don't be worried if it sounds boring. You don't need to add jokes. It's not a compulsory thing. You can stick to the word. The word will speak to people. Right? Number two, develop the supernatural. Right? You and I, as believers, we must develop our supernatural skills and the ability that God has given us. Right? Now, for example, 
you feel that God has called you to pray for the sick. There's the anointing of you know, praying for, the, for those who are sick and they're getting healed. Now you develop on that. Say, God, this is something that I feel when I pray that people are getting healed. Help me to grow in that. Right Now, again, our motive should be right. What is our motive? Why do we want to do what we are doing? Right? So, but you develop in your skills. So, for example, you feel that you want to be a worship leader. Right? You have to practice. You have to develop. You have to learn how to sing and 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 lead in the prophetic. All of this we develop. Right? I, I think I've shared examples where I never knew how to lead worship. I couldn't lead worship for one hour. I would send eight songs for one hour. Right? It is true. Right? Uh, it was so. I have some of the song lists. Eight songs, one hour. And so over time, we develop ourselves, right? So I remember the first time um, I was asked to teach in Bible college. I was so nervous. I prepared, right? I prepared, and because I just graduated, I was graduated, and the my juniors, I'm teaching them. And I was teaching, and so I went to the class, and I thought, okay, uh, I prepared very well, right? I went, I came out. I don't know the, what I said in the class. I don't know what was the topic. I was blank. I said, what did I teach? I don't know. So I called my junior. They were my junior. I said, come here. I said, what was the subject? What did, I, what did I teach? What Did I make any sense in what I spoke? Yes, yes, you, you said correctly, whatever you said. But it was for me, it was, it was too much because I, I didn't know how to do it. Over time, I learned. We developed, right? OK, teaching is not the same as preaching. Preaching, we can preach and preach, use Daniel and Joel and everyone. In one message, you finish it. But you can't do that in teaching. You need to prepare. You need to have background information. You have to give the right material. So you develop in that skill. What about evangelizing? Right? Sometimes, you know, I remember initially I would go, uh, uh, I stand on the street and try to evangelize. I see the person, oh, this guy looks like a guy who will beat me up, so I'll keep it. I'll not give him. <laughs> you know, this person looks, you know, he's he's got that mark on his forehead. He looks like a decent boy. <laughs> Let me give him. So we would choose that way, right? Uh, but over time, God gives us the wisdom. God gives us the ability to know how to talk. Many times people have asked questions. Uh, said, you know, they've asked, uh, if, if I ask for forgiveness, where, how do I know all my sins are forgiven? I don't know what to say. You just believe, that's it. But that's not compelling for them. So how to communicate, how to you know, make sure that they understand, try to help them understand. So whatever our gift is, we develop in that. Develop in the supernatural. Now, the best part is each one of us have the same Holy Spirit. And each one of us have the same person and the same access to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not going to say, OK, this person I'll give more, this person I'll give less. So if I want to develop in my gifting, in my calling, I have to spend time in God's presence. Right? So for example, worship, I remember over time, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I had to lead every you know, one hour. During those days, we were only three or four worship leaders. So Pastor Jay, me. Uh, and two others. So usually for the one-hour sessions, it would only be four, three or four of us, right? Because the others were all working, and when we had our five days of prayer, it was only us. So most of the time, it was Pastor Jay and me. He'll do the morning, I'll do the afternoon. I'll do the morning, he'll do the afternoon. So it was always like that. So I realized that, hey, I have to develop in this gift of leading worship for one hour. I cannot be sending eight songs. So I would watch, I would watch Pastor Jay. He'll send three songs. What are you going to do with three songs? right? But then I, I used to watch him very intently. I used to watch. I used to go back home. I used to listen to songs, listen to prophetic worship. And the most important thing is to spend time in God's presence. When we spend time in God's presence, I used to spend a lot of time in God's presence. I said, God, you've given me the gift. I'm limited. Songs also are getting limited now. Do something, minister to people. That when we sing, that when we play an instrument, let worship, let it come from my heart, let it be an overflow. 
that others will experience the presence of God. Right? It will be an overflow. So over time, it became five songs and three songs. Now we can do one song for one hour. <laughs> Same song for one hour. How? Because it's, it's a gift that's developed. And it doesn't end there. We can keep growing in that, growing in the spirit, growing in the supernatural. Right? Whether it's you're praying for the sick, you're reading in the, the word of God, uh, uh, prophetic, oh, the number of mistakes I've made in the prophetic. I prayed for, uh, you know, after church, one boy and a girl came and I said, prayed for them. I said, God is going to bless you with a child. And after the whole prayer, he said, this is my sister. And I'm a, you know, it's my cousin's sister. She's my cousin's sister, you know. I said, oh, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I learned over time. I learned over time. Was it embarrassing? Very embarrassing. Right? But I learned over time. I said, okay, God, help me to understand. Help me to develop. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. It right? <laughs> sound very funny. But it's true. It's true. And this is in church. I, I, I prayed for them honestly. I said, Pastor, everything's okay. But this is my cousin's sister. But she's going to get married. Maybe you're talking about her. <laughs> you know, but it's okay. And I went back home. I cried. I prayed, God, why you do this to me? <laughs> I, but it helped me not run away from this gift. But I, I asked God, God, I want to pursue more of it. Right? So to be more accurate, to be more uh, you know, leaning towards him. And I learned, okay, always ask questions before you pray and you know before you prophesy simple thing i didn't know at that time all i could have asked is hey your uh, husband and wife what are you, what is your name i didn't even ask the name i just started praying <clears throat> right so now what i do is when people come I say hey, okay uh, so your husband and wife how long are you married for get to know them then pray for them and you pray with confidence and you ask the holy spirit okay holy spirit minister so you learn the practical, you develop in the supernatural, right? There were times when uh, during the uh, worship time, if you see, go back to the old recordings at, uh, on YouTube, you'll see it. Um, because during those days, uh, two Sundays, I used to be at Central. So, uh, so what happened was I used to give words of knowledge, like what we do in the supernatural, word of knowledge, prophecy. And then one day I was listening to my own video and I was, uh, why am I giving word of knowledge, prophecy? This is worship time. So I felt the Holy Spirit saying, don't do all this. Let worship be worship. Let people worship the Lord. Right? Uh, in a different kind of setting, then you can do like supernatural hour. In a smaller setting, you can do all this word of knowledge, prophecy. So if you go back to the early recordings, you will see there's full prophesying, and <laughs> word of knowledge and all, at, at the main church at Central. And over time, I realized, hey, let's not do that. Because people are worshipping God. And suddenly, if somebody's giving prophecy, what's happening? They're opening their eyes. They're trying to understand what this person, worship leader, is saying. So I learned over time, okay, let me not do that. Right? So there are plenty of mistakes that we make. But the point is we develop ourselves. We learn from those mistakes and grow. Right? Three, develop the ability to present the gospel to varied audiences. Whether you're in the city, in the village, in the town. Now, uh, we have gone to many villages, especially when we go for missions. Now, when we go for missions, we cannot be teaching all homiletics and hermeneutics. And they'll be wondering, what is this? Right? So we need to tune into their... So whenever we go for missions, and if you see the short-term Bible college that we did, we did simple stuff. And right? identity, faith, praise and worship. So the ability to present the gospel to different audiences. Then you have the who are very learned, the, the, the ones who are intellectuals, should be able to minister to them also. The Apostle Paul had this brilliant ability to do that. Right? He was able to minister to the tent makers, to the uneducated, and he was also able to minister to the Greeks, the learned people. To the Jew, he was a Jew. To the Greeks, he was a Greek. Right? So we must also develop that ab ability. Fourth one, maintain your passion for souls. I, I like that word, maintain. 
what is the meaning of maintain keep it on the same level you know when we are passionate for something that passion can go down or it can go up right uh, and so here we need to maintain that passion for souls when we see of course you know when we have ministry uh, when we start our own ministry the ministry grows we may not have time to go and do evangelism everywhere right but wherever possible you and i can reach out you and i can minister to people right so for example you you may have started your ministry ministry has grown 200 300 people you're busy you can't afford to go out and do street ministry but you can form teams you can teach people to do that you can whenever possible wherever possible you can reach out to people right it could be people in your own community in your own neighborhood reach out to them so every now and then what i do is if there are people near my house who i see okay you know i can share the gospel with them i'll go even if it's a broken kannada i try my best i i just share with them I, uh, and then sometimes there are you know there's this it sector that's uh, near you know where i stay and uh, there are a lot of pgs that have come now so there are a lot of people who are in the corporate so when i see them i go speak i say so my parents keep asking who do you, who do you keep talking to how many people you know here you know but i keep sharing the gospel with them uh, some of them didn't like it some of them said they'll report me so go report do what you want but this is what i'm going to do right so i did it you maintain your passion for souls right um and never let it die out right uh, keep keep it burning learn how to equip the saints for the similar ministry very important apostle paul did that moses did that he taught joshua what to do elijah taught elisha what to do paul taught all his team what to do so whatever we do teach others how to do it if you're gifted in music teach others if you're gifted in singing ministering the word preparing sermons teach others how to do it right and enable them to do the similar kind of ministry when ministering to you know to a local church as an evangelist if you are ministering to a local church submit to the leadership of the local pastor if the pastor says 30 minutes finish in 25 minutes if the pastor says no singing song in the uh, end don't sing song don't say no that is how i do if the pastor says you know don't talk about uh, other ministries don't talk about it if the pastor says whatever he says remember it's his church it's his ministry you're just there for some time for one and a half hours and then you're going but he's there all the time i right? submit to his leadership right and be sensitive to the local church order so there will be a certain kind of way the service goes it may be a church where boys sit in one place girls sit in one place now you may come from a church where all boys and girls sitting together it's all mixed now, you don't have to go there and say see the bible says we are all one body we don't need this separation <laughs> you don't have to say all of that right and uh, i remember this one time uh, we had gone as a team and this preacher from another place had come and he started ridiculing the people because they you know they the women covered their head and he's ridiculing them and i felt that was not when needed right now that is their culture we go in north india that's their culture they want to do it let them do it now the significance we may know but that's okay right submit to the leader to the church i mean that's how they are leave them they leave their foot where it's okay do it the point is to minister the gospel to touch their lives these other things are secondary to us right so be sensitive to the local church order and finally as an evangelist be connected to a local church um uh, now it's very easy for us uh, i don't know how many of you are called to be an evangelist but if you're called to be an evangelist you know you're mostly traveling to places you're ministering in different places uh but remember you also are a believer and you must be connected to a church you should must have a local church right okay this is my local church and then you can you know whatever be part of the local when you're not traveling be there serve in the church now just because you're an evangelist and you're there in your home church don't demand for uh, positions don't demand okay now i'm here in bangalore let me preach don't do that right uh 
if the pastor remember you may be preaching to 10000 people but your church may be 500 people you don't compare your 10000 to the 500 here your 10000 is that is evangelism this 500 is the pastors is the church so you submit you're just like another member in the church right oh, and so we must understand these you know different stages that are there in ministry so so we'll stop here um, and we'll pick up next class we'll pick up from uh, the teacher we we'll look at jesus as the example of the teacher uh, but any questions regarding the evangelist um, any questions no? right so i just want to encourage us uh, you know whenever you get opportunities whenever you can be willing to you know minister on this develop yourself develop in the supernatural develop your gifts keep growing never be stay dormant you know sometimes our emotions our thoughts will make us feel like okay stagnant but you have to push further that stage and you'll be able to you know, the lord will minister to us right so all right any questions those who are online mm. Okay, yeah, there's a question here from uh, relevant or not, but uh, like uh, as we are talking, as we are uh, discussing of it, uh, you told like uh, it's better to ask questions mm. when we go and pray for them. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like getting to know about yeah. them, right? So, uh, how we can know like whether they were coming and praying? It's like if I know about what you're going through, it can be out of my own also i am coming and praying how can we uh, discern that is they are speaking from inspired by holy spirit or out of their own emotion knowing about us yeah so 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 i you we we'll learn more in this about this in understanding the prophetic uh, but if you read the book you will understand like how the holy spirit speaks different ways but just to quickly answer you the the reason you can ask questions is so that you you're not asking what is your problem and then praying and saying okay this is your problem that means it's obvious right but what you're doing is you're trying to get to know them and you're praying for them that's it nothing nothing extra you're not saying anything uh, and the, the holy spirit speaks you deliver the word that's it that's our responsibility so uh, you don't have to be under any pressure right feel free to minister to people Right. Uh, uh, but one thing I learned is just ask them where are you from. You know, one thing I ask them is uh, is English okay? Can I speak in English? Is it some is comfortable with that? Or uh, sometimes I ask them where are you, where do you work? What do you do? So I'm just trying to get to know them. But when I'm giving a prophetic, don't uh, I don't repeat the same thing what they have told me. The prophetic is something which God can minister speak to them. Uh, if there's some word. If there's no word, that's okay. Just move on. And you learn more on developing the gifts. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for joining this class. I'll meet. Let's meet next week. Have a great week ahead. God bless.